This video explains the CLEEPS procedure for inspection and leak testing of school sealed sources. First, we need to check that the detection equipment is working satisfactorily and that we can reliably detect any leak of radioactive materials. Okay, the equipment we need is a counter. The one here is a Philip Harris Digi counter, but older ones such as Panax are absolutely fine. The tube must be a Zeppi 1481 or equivalent, for example the MX168, or a Zeppi 1490. Also we need a tube holder and a test source. You can buy a test source from IPC Electronics, or you can make one following our guide, GL314. So first of all, I do a background count and I take the cap off the GM tube. Set the voltage to 450 volts if it's variable. Set the timer for 1000 seconds and start to count. So the background count is 296 and I'll make a record of that. I now put on the test source. Make sure that the active part of the source is right in the centre of the GM tube and I start again to count for 1000 seconds. After 1000 seconds with the test source, take the count. In this case, it's 841. Remove the test source. Replace the cap. And then go on to calculate the comparative GM tube efficiency. Now to calculate the comparative GM tube efficiency, that's how the tube here compares to a new one. Multiply 100 by the difference between the test source count and the background count, both taken over 1000 seconds, or divided by 540. So in this case, it's 100 times 841 minus 296, or divided by 540, which comes to 101%. An efficiency between 70% and 150% for the ZP1481 or 70% and 175% for the LND72233 is acceptable. If the efficiency is much higher, particularly if the count goes up in twos and threes each time, the tube has probably come to the end of its useful life and is replacing. It's a sign that the quench gas has degraded. The last part of the test is to check that the GM tube detects alpha radiation, because the test source is actually a beta gamma source. This is a simple test using a sheet of paper and an alpha source. Use your usual setup for demonstrating the characteristics of sealed sources, but remove the GM tube cap. Put a sheet of paper in front of the GM tube window and move the source holder so it is two to three millimeters from the GM tube window. Place the alpha source, that's americium 241 or plutonium 239, but not radium 226 into the holder. Start the counter. The count rate will rise because both sources emit some degree of gamma radiation and x-rays. Remove the paper and you should notice a sharp increase in the count rate from the alpha emissions. It's a good idea to complete a detector test record. You'll find an example of that in L93 in section 16.13. The second part of this video explains the way to carry out the inspection and leak testing. You need to wear a lab coat and disposable gloves because of the slight risk of detecting contamination. However, a leak of radioactive materials is rare the visual inspection tends to reveal any degradation well before any leak of materials. You need a shallow plastic tray 
stand and clamp, cellulose filter paper disc, about 40 millimeters in diameter, although the size isn't critical, plain mirror, long forceps, pen, and of course the GM tube, tube holder, and counter. Set up the equipment as shown here, remove the GM tube cap, carefully clamp the GM tube so the window is about two millimeters above the plastic tray. Clamp the tube, not the tube holder, otherwise there is a risk the tube could fall out of the holder and become damaged. You need to do a background count for 1000 seconds. If you have already done this in the past hour when carrying out the relative GM tube efficiency, you do not need to do it again. Divide the count you got over 1000 seconds by 10 to get the average count over 100 seconds. Now on to the visual inspection. First examine the foil at the back of the cup. Do it indirectly using the mirror. Check for discoloration of the foil and any other degradation. And now to the leak test. Draw a 20 millimeter diameter circle onto the filter paper. I use the GM tube cap to do this. Label the wipe with the source you're about to leak test. Carefully rub the front of the cup source in the circle for about 10 seconds. Don't press hard. Put the source back into its container and move it well away at least two meters from the GM tube. Carefully slide the wipe underneath the GM tube, making sure the wipe doesn't touch the front, the window of the GM tube. Start the counter for 100 seconds and count. If the total count from the filter paper and background, which in this case is 24, is less than twice the average background over 100 seconds, the source has passed the leak test. So for example, the average background count here over 100 seconds was 29.6. The count from the paper and background was 24, so the source has passed its leak test. But if the count had been over 59, it would have failed and would warrant further investigation. Do the same for all the other sealed sources. Use a fresh filter paper each time, throw the used ones into a black bag for the waste bin. If you have radium sealed sources, do them last, because they can show contamination from the outgassing of radon, and this technique minimizes the risk of cross-contamination. If you have any of the Isotrack Rodstar sources, these are inspected and leak tested in a similar way. These sources, however, are designed to be held by hand, so make sure you know which end to hold the rod. It's the end furthest away from the machined groove in the rod. Now there's no protective grill on the front end of these sources, so be careful not to make contact with the radioactive foil. It's the part recessed a few millimetres into the end. Make sure there is no debris on the filter paper and do not attempt to wipe the foil directly. Make sure you record the leak test results in the radioactive source history sheet. You'll find a template in L93 section 16.4. That brings me to the end of this video demonstration. For more information, uh, particularly if you get unusual results, refer to L93 or contact CLEPS on our helpline.